Welcome back everybody inside of the Rogers studio for another episode of Attack Rap. I'm your host Matt Sanderson. We've got a good show tonight. We have Cole Cameron along with Maxim Sushko on the show with us. And if you remember earlier on in the year, Cole Cameron kind of flew solo for a whole hour. we got to give him a lot of kudos for that. Told us a little bit of Maxim Sushko. Now we have the opportunity to have Maxim Sushko in the studio here with us. We'll get into that in just a little bit. We have a lot to cover, including Owen Sound winning seven of their last eight games. Certainly on a roll as of late. And they did a, a good job this past week uh they're currently on a, a four game win streak right now but uh we're going to start with the on the run ohl player of the week and it comes from the Oshawa generals and in kenny heather uh, apologies if i i do pronounce it wrong but uh seven points in three games and plus five over that duration 39 points on the season for him he's only a 20 year old kid from lonsboro ontario and he's the longest serving Oshawa general right now on the team. Uh, played f has played 51 games so far this season. Um, and the Huron Tractor Player of the Week, well, it comes from Maxim Susko, who we'll talk to a little bit later on. But he had four goals, six points in three games, and a plus five over that time frame. Uh, 2017 Flyers draft pick. Uh, he's from Brest, Belarus, and he was also the captain of Belarus at uh, the World Juniors. 25 goals, 17 assists, 42 points on the season, and uh, he's definitely a good person to watch on the ice. He has a lot of skill, a lot of talent. So it'll be uh, good to be able to talk to him a little bit about that. And if you've ever wondered kind of how he comes up with those celebrations, we're going to pick his brain about that as well. Um, going over into OHL scoring, uh, Morgan Frost now, he leads the way among everybody else in the Ontario Hockey League with 85 points. Yes, has passed Jordan Kairou. Kairou's got 82 on the season. Aaron Luchuk right behind, right behind him with 79 points. Uh, Sam Melitich from the Niagara Ice Dogs, he's in that mix too, along with Adam Maskerin, Jason Robertson, and Nick Suzuki. Suzuki's got 67 points on the season. Uh, slowly climbing that ladder, 33 goals, 36 assists. Uh, Linus Neiman in there as well. Sorry, correction, uh, 25 goals, 42 assists there for Suzuki. Um, Taylor Radish from the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds in there, along with Cliff Pooh to round out the top 10 there. And attack scoring, Nick Suzuki leading the way there. 67 points, as we mentioned. Aiden Dudas, 49 points on the year, 23 goals, 26 assists in 49 games. So you can basically match his points for games played totals virtually back-to-back -back with uh, 49 points in 49 games. Sean Dersey in there with 47 points in 37. We hope that he is back in the lineup soon for the Owen Sound attack. Maxim Sushko, he is up there with 42 points on the season. Um, 20, 25 goals, 17 assists. Kevin Hancock, Brett McKenzie, Ethan Zapula, Jonah Gadjevich, Marcus Phillips, and Cade Robinson round out the top 10 in attack scoring on the team so far. Um, we're going to go to over now to the OHL top performers of the week, of the month, sorry. Um, if we can just get a look at that for a minute. Uh, start. We're going to start with uh, Sam Militic of the Niagara Ice Dogs. Uh, 12 goals, 13 assists, 25 points in 13 games in January. A plus 7 in that stretch. And he's 4th in OHL scoring. He's a Pittsburgh Penguins prospect there. On to Nicholas Hag of the Mississauga Steelheads. 57 points on the season. He is a minus 3, but 5 goals, 16 points in 10 games in January. And uh, he joins Nick Suzuki as a Las Vegas Golden Knights prospect. 6'5", 216 from Kitchener, Ontario. Now it's Andrei Svechnikov from Barrie. 
43 points on the year. He is the OHL Rookie of the Month. Nine goals, 17 points in 11 games. And he was top ranked the North American skater in NHL Central Scouting midterm rankings in that mix too. He's a plus 14 on the season. And OHL Goalie of the Month comes from Mario Kalina of the Kitchener Rangers. 264 goals against average, a 922 save percentage. He's got a 9-5-2 record on the year. And he was 6-1-1 one one with a 174 GAA and a 946 save percentage in January. Along with that, he brings two shutouts, and he started the season with Ryerson University. And yes, uh, they've had a little bit of uh, flip-flopping back and forth there in Kitchener with uh, goaltenders coming in and out, also due to injury. And uh, Kalina has stepped up in a big way for that squad, one of the big reasons why they are where they are in the standings. OHL uh, top academic players of the week. We'll get into that in a moment, but we're going to go over to the standings right now, taking a look at the Western Conference. First, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds locked up that playoff spot, 89 points on the year. The Kitchener Rangers with 70 points, Sarnia 76, and there's about a 20-point gap between them and the London Knights, but then London to Owen Sound, there's only a three-point differential in there. The Owen Sound attack sitting one point back of the Guelph Storm in that seventh place spot. And as we mentioned, winning seven of their last eight, they're on a roll. Let's see how far they can move up those standings. Flipping over to the Eastern Conference now, the Hamilton Bulldogs leading the charge there. 72 points on the year and tied Barry and Kingston, both at 61 points right now. The Niagara Ice Dogs fall back to the fourth place spot with 59 points on the year. And then a tie in that fifth and sixth place area between the Oshawa Generals and the North Bay Battalion. Yeah, yes, both of those teams have 53 points on the season. Keep in mind, Nick King, Matthew Struthers, former Owen Sound attackers, now on that team they're doing in North Bay. They're doing a great job there in that organization. The Ottawa 67s and the Mississauga Steelheads, the Peterborough Peets and Sudbury Wolves round out the top 10. We want you to stay with us. We have a lot coming your way including the opportunity to win a pair of tickets to the Valentine's Day game, February the 14th, against the London Knights, and also February the 17th against the Ottawa 67s. Cole Cameron, Maxim Sushko in studio here with me around the other side of the break. Stay with us here on Brandon Vandershot, on side Attack Hockey on Rogers TV here for Rep. Welcome back, everybody, inside of the Roger studio. More of a tack wrap here. Not rapid fire, but that was also uh, a little bit of extra advertising there for rapid fire segments. Uh, check out, out those between the uh, first intermission of attack hockey games uh, where, we, where I interview attack players, and uh, it's just light, some lighthearted questions with your your favorite pregame meal, that kind of stuff. You get to know a little bit more about them. Sitting in studio with Cole Cameron and for the first time, Maxim Sushko. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Matt. All right. So, pretty good week for you guys. Um, you've won uh, four in a row now. Seven of your last eight. Seems like uh, you guys are definitely on a roll. Maxim, you had a, a really good week this week. Um, what did you think of... Uh, your hockey team's week so far, you guys are doing pretty good. I think now we're playing how we can play and I think when we play in an other our game and teams can't stop us and uh, when we move back really good, when we shooting, when we follow coach instruction and devices, so teams can stop us yeah absolutely no uh, things are, are really clicking Cole uh, you're you're able to jump back uh, 
to your your spot on D there. Uh, you guys have kind of, it's been a, a little bit of a, a rough go in there. I think at, at even one point on Friday, you guys were almost down to four D-men, but you've been playing a lot with even five D. Tell us a little bit about that. You guys have obviously been uh, doing a good job with that. Um, yeah, you know what, our team's faced a lot of adversity um, injury-wise this year, and that's, uh, that's put some guys that, uh, that aren't used to logging as many minutes into, into those roles and into those positions, and they've had to step up. And, you know, we got to see that this week with guys like Igor Shibrikov, uh, you know, getting the game winner against, against Guelph, which was huge for, huge for us because uh, third periods have, you know, been something that, that we've certainly been trying to work on and, and close out. And, you know, this week, I think we, uh, we certainly solidified uh, some of those doubts with that, and we're looking to move forward with that. But, you know what, it's, uh, like I said, it comes from contributions from everyone um, on our team and, uh, you know, having to step up at certain times. And, you know, I've been really impressed with, uh, with guys like that and guys that are taking that role. And, you know, Russell was put on D a bit there. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, like Sue said, you know, once we get going, that uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good force, and we get a little momentum and a little swagger going, and good things will happen. So, absolutely, yeah, uh, definitely, probably a lot of expectations coming into the year, but like I said, it seems like almost after the Christmas break, you guys flipped a, a, a new switch, maybe, and um, the defense has, has stepped up in big ways, especially with guys like Dursey and Lyle out, uh, Maxim. You guys have been scoring more and more. You guys have that, that offensive touch right now. Yeah, I think after all juniors, I'm playing with more confidence right now. And now we play a lot with Dudas and Zipula. So we, I hope we found some chemistry. And that's why now sometimes I'm giving a pass and I already know that Zipula or Dudas is going to be there and it's making our game like so much easily yeah and one of the big things is you see you guys play with not only a lot of aggression out there your line but a lot of smiles on the ice too uh you and dudas really flying around there with zapula it's uh definitely good to see i want to ask you something though these celebrations where do you get them where, where does this all start <sighs> I know one time I was watching YouTube and I saw Yarmir Yager Sally and after I decide actually why not it's gonna be funny and fans gonna like it so I tried once second time and boys start talking about it like Sush keep going you should do it <laughs> yeah and you, when you score every time like when you doing and I decided yeah it's gonna be my Sally and that one was <laughs> it was pretty good there too. It's a new one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit of highlights here from uh, Maxim Sushko as uh, you get the nice tip out in front uh, past the, the shot of Marcus Phillips there. Um, and as we go through, this is the Kitchener Rangers game just the other night. And great pass out there from uh, Dudas over to you, Sushko. Back-to-back uh, -back almost <laughs> uh, with those celebrations. And then you don't miss a beat here at all either with uh, setting up your teammates. You guys uh, definitely, like you've talked about, have good chemistry on that line. Um, that uh, I, We've even seen you do the NHL 99, though, where you, you have the, the stick over your head, too. And then I think there was almost a dab in there as well. Yeah, I did. I did first time in last year in playoff because I was talking with my brother before a game, and I said, if I score, I'm going to do it. And he <laughs> said, no way, you won't do it. <laughs> I and did. did. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, so before we get in, into any more questions, uh, we're going to take a look at the highlights from Wednesday night's game against the Barry Colts, Nick Suzuki bobblehead night. Face off goes into the slot, and there was a shot by Dalen Grew as he got to the bouncing puck. Around the boards, blocked by Ryan Suzuki. Tucker trying to get it out. Cameron takes a shot. Save, rebound, Doherty. Right pad, save through his leg. Scores! Doherty will not be denied. He follows it up, beats Lazarev, and Owen Sound leads one to nothing. 
hit hard by Trent Bork. Owen Sound takes it, and Brett McKenzie is charging down the right side. McKenzie's going to take it right to the goal with the shot. He scores! What a powerful shorthanded goal from Brett McKenzie, and it's 2 0 Owen Sound. Now Sushko's going to try and tip this out, and he picks it up. Two on one shorthanded. Sushko in Zapula. Maxim Sushko shoots. Lazar at the save. Puck loose. He scores! Maxim Sushko follows it up. A shorthanded goal. Three to nothing. Svechnikov was going to be able to tap it home, and he just healed it wide. Svechnikov frustrated after missing there, trying to get it back. McKenzie will flip it around the boards. Heading towards the point. Gru throws a check. Luchuk floats one to the goal, and Svechnikov has it go in off of him. So he misses one, and then another comes back and hits him. Svechnikov in. Bumps with Robinson, back to the line, Fergus. Over now to Sokolov. Sokolov waits into the slot. Svechnikov shoots and he scores! Andre Svechnikov, second of the game. Gadjevich slowing it down. Svechnikov comes at him. Passes it to Trent Bork, up the middle. Kevin Hancock to Jonah Gadjevich. Gadjevich now sends it across, tipped in on goal. Here's Suzuki in tight at the side of the net. Down his last round, they score! Kevin Hancock pokes it home. A big goal late gives Owen Sound a two goal lead. Suzuki. Suzuki will play it back, and that is going to do it. The Owen Sound attack pick up their sixth consecutive home ice victory. Yeah, so great win there on Nick Suzuki bobblehead night 4-2 win over the Barry Colts. Uh, Cole, I thought from especially in that game, from really the drop of the puck, you guys controlled that game uh, almost start to finish, even with a little bit of pressure from Barry. Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, I thought we had a great start as well. Um, controlled the pace, um, got up early on them um, early in the game. And then, uh, you know, we had a bit of a slip, a little bit of a hiccup in the third period. But, um, you know, we've got a tremendous uh, first line that, uh, that, you know, found a way to, to get that goal late in the third. And that was huge for us, um, obviously, um, able to close that game out and, uh, and, and complete that third period, which, um, which is something that we're just getting better and better at. And, you know, as you get um, deeper into the season, that's even more important. So, um, you know, and I think we've got almost a playoff hockey mentality right now, and, and you, you get to see that desperation level in the third, and, um, you know, it brings out the best in our guys, and, and, it's, uh, and it's bringing out the best in our play as well. So, um, you know, huge, huge plays there, and we obviously had some guys step up, like Sush as well, um, with, with some uh, shorthanded goals, and uh, you know, we're just, like I said, looking to build on this and keep it going. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, and you guys did something that you haven't done for actually all, all season where it came to the point of you guys got to that, that three-game win streak and it's happened a couple times in the season, but it's never really been more. You guys are now riding a four-game win streak right now. Um, and this, game, this week, Maxim, did you guys feel any pressure that... Um, you guys had to move up the standings here and it was uh, crunch time here in January in this week? I think no. Now we just feel confident and we trust for each other and I think now we all know that we can beat every team in the league and we're not afraid to play against who play Ottawa, Kingston, Peterborough. Now we just know that we gonna play in our game because you know in the first part of season usually first and second periods being the best and third usually being like pretty bad but now in the last 10 15 games we playing so much better in third period as it's and i think it's why we gain more points absolutely yeah and you can definitely notice it on the ice but now we're going to go over to friday night's game against the guelph storm on that line change and uh, did well. Here's Schneider in a low shot. Great. Side tried to pinball it out. It's kept in by Bork for Suzuki. Return feed. Shot scores. It is Nick Suzuki. Back to the corner. McKenzie to the point for Jacob Friend. Quickly to Sushko. His shot scores off the post and in. He spins back. He'll cycle down low to James McEwen in the far corner. As McEwen works back to the point for Woolley. He winds. Fire scores. What a blast. And that is Schnarr. And Zapula gets it right back for Owen Sound. Over to Aiden Dudas. Nice 
shot and scores. What a move, Aiden Dudas, a toe dragon, top shelf. That's a big league goal in sound. He looks across and sees Sushko, quick pass to Dudas, back to Sushko, right in front, and Aiden Dudas has another, and another beauty one it is, his second of the game. And this guy can try to keep it in, and it's odd man rush here for Guelph. That's Sam Arukov in for Howell, stop shelf, scores. Short-handed goal for Liam Howell on a beauty pass by Sam Arukov, too. On their side. Storm keep it in, back to Radcliffe, winds, fire, scores! Isaac Radcliffe. When sound trying to clear, they can't as it's kept in by Guelph. Here's Radcliffe again. Swung in front, shot, scores! What a goal by Torupchenko to tie the game! Down for Lazarchuk, that was knocked away, or pardon me, Sapula. Out to the line, Chibrikov. There's a low shot, scores! Igor Chibrikov. Phillips and now, here's Gadjevic. Goes around Merkley, lead pass Kevin Hancock into an empty net. The own sound attack. Uh, put this one away. So despite a surge there from the Guelph Storm, uh, Chibrikov comes in in the big with his first goal of his OHL career. Cole, um, you play with him there on defense. Let us know what was his, his reaction like and how did you guys feel for him on the bench? Uh, well, you know what, as you shall say, you know, he's a Russian, so he's a little more quiet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, he's certainly excited and we were excited too. Um, it was a bit of a crazy um, third period um, and game at that, in that sense of uh, as far as goals were concerned. And then Fran got hurt and had to step out of the game to get, uh, to get some medical treatment there. And, uh, and then we had to have guys like, like I said, Chibrikov and uh, you know Bork and Phillips and and myself included that uh, that had to take on some bigger roles than are used to or, or more ice time than usual. Um, and uh, you know that they golf did climb back in there, but you know we get guys like that stepping up in the third, like I said earlier. So um, you know we're excited to be able to close games like that out, and you know I, I think it attests to our mental resiliency and you know the maturity level of even 16-year-olds um, on our team as well. So. Um, you know, great, great all-around team effort. Um, I think we let them in a little more than uh, than we would have liked to back into that game. But uh, you know, that's that's part of the process of maturing. And and as the season goes on, you, you look to get better in those areas and um, and move forward. Does it help a lot knowing that you have a, a young guy like uh, Chibrikov who is able to step up when needed, scores a game-winning goal, just speaks to maybe the depth of this club um, yeah I, you know, I, I'll take that <laughs> sure um, you know I, it's you know it's huge for confidence as well and, yeah. you know, and, it, and it's great for him um, when you can have guys like that stepping up or um, you know you have guys that are coming in um, you know 16 year olds like Mitch Russell um, you know Aiden Dudas in his second year that's having a tremendous year you know Sush in the second year that's having a tremendous year um, you know those guys are, are, are a huge short team, and that uh, you know that helps our depth levels and our depth charts as well. And you know, the, and you know, if you look at our top four four lines and you, you compare them to other teams in the league, like we've got that depth and we've got that scoring ability. Um, and you know, when you put that all together and you start closing out third periods, and you know, all you know, our goalies are playing really well right now too. Um, you know, that's that's scary and it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think you're just kind of starting to see you know what we can do when when that uh, all those pieces are together. So um, you know, guys like that stepping up. Uh, that you know you're not you're not expecting to step up, but do and, you know it takes that load off of that first line that's that's usually um, doing a lot of the scoring or the second line um, as well or the power play. So for sure. All right, so we're going to take this time get a get to know a little bit more of Maxim Sushko. Uh, I know Cole when he was in here earlier on in the season did a good job of kind of bringing Maxim Sushko together as a whole, but since you're here. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with hockey and how you're here with Olin Sound. I started hockey with my brother. He's two years older than me. And one time, my father friend just invited us for watch hockey game in, from my hometown. And we went there and we were so excited. And right after, like maybe right after game or next day, Day we went to the sh shop and bought whole equipment and we started playing hockey 
Yeah, and uh, I started playing with two, three years guys older than me. Yeah. And they were already skating pretty good and I couldn't skate. And it was like pretty nervous. But after one, two weeks, I started skating pretty well and it's, I think it's the best thing what happened in my life. Yeah? Yeah, and how I get in the one sound. After World Championship uh, under 18 in Belarus, we won the championship and my agent was talking about uh, me with lots of teams and Dale the Grey called him and my agent sent him my video and he said I want to see this guy in my team next year so I didn't even decide I said okay I want to be there all right well and I, I can assume that it's probably no regrets eh yeah yeah no it seems like you're fitting in quite nicely and you remind me of Another Petrus Palmu out there, who you got to play with a little bit last season. Uh, do you take a little bit of your game from him? Yeah. First of all, I think he was enjoying every game. He was laughing every game. He was smiling every game. And it's, it's the most important for me because on last year I was... I didn't speak English really good and... I was a little bit nervous about it, so I, uh, even on a game, sometimes I worried about my game too much because it's higher levels in Belarus, mm -hmm. and uh, I worry about it so much. But after with every game, you gain more confidence, especially when you're scoring or gain assists, you gain more and more confidence, and. I want to say thank you for my teammates because no one spoke English last year, but they helped me help me to learn English as fast as I can. And even after a couple of months, I already could speak English. It's really huge thank you for my teammates. <laughs> no, absolutely, and you you do a very good job. You uh, have done. A great job with English. Cole has even told us a little bit about your English too. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more of the, the friendship between you and Cole in just a little bit. But we have a, a pair of tickets that we want to give away to the Valentine's ga Day game on February the 14th against the London Knights. So cue the trivia question. The first one with Maxim Sushko. If you've been following what... He's done over these last couple of years. So Which NHL either. club drafted Maxim Sushko and what year yeah. and what round? So if you've been paying close, again, close attention, um, you know that he's a prospect of what NHL team, what year and round. Was that a, a pretty special moment probably? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So uh, going to be plenty more on the other side of the break. Stay with us because we have more coming your way. Welcome back, everybody, inside of the Rogers studio. More of a tack wrap here. Cole Cameron, Maxim Sushko in studio with me. Um, Maxim, let's get to know a little bit of, of your family, if that's all right. We, you already told us about your, your brother there. Um, how, how has your, your family helped influence your hockey career? And do you have just a brother? Do you have any sisters? No, I have only one brother. About my family, now my father, he's the owner of the hockey team in Belarus. Okay. Yeah, so like he's really close with hockey. And he was the most important person in my life, especially about hockey, because he supports me every time. Because my mother has... Uh, 
my mother was worried about school and father worried about hockey. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's been like whole my life. So my mother never talked about hockey, but and sometimes she didn't come watch my game because she's so nervous and he she yelled so much. So like, <laughs> I think even when she been in Owen Town game, everybody heard her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my brother he's playing uh, uh, USHL oh, nice. in America. Yeah, and I met him once in a road trip on Flint. Nice. And second time in Buffalo, he came for a couple of days, and my parents been there too. And after they come to Owen Sound for a couple of days. Well, do you? Is there a lot of uh, friendly competition between you and your brother? And uh, do you beat him in the skills competition? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a D, so yeah. not. And but when we were young, we couldn't play in same line because when he was young he played forward now he's playing D yeah. but we couldn't play the same line because we fight every pra every practice <laughs> every practice so we yelled at each other like you gave me pre bad pass no you gave me bad pass and <laughs> start fighting every time <laughs> yeah and <laughs> after our father was pretty angry about it and every time when he was fighting, after he said, okay, 500 push-ups, yeah. A, a little bit of discipline there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we do have a caller on the line with us. We have Mike on the phone. Mike, how are you tonight? Great, how are you guys? Pretty good. Uh, you have a question for these guys? Or I just had a comment. I'd just like to really uh, tell Maxim that we really appreciate watching him play hockey. He always has such a good heart. He's always laughing. and good celebrations and as far as the World Juniors, I really like watching them there. I don't usually watch too many more games besides the Canada games, but I really enjoyed watching him in Belarus too and he was a stellar contributor to his country. So I'd just like to congratulate him and keep up the good work for the attack. All right, uh, do you uh, want to answer the trivia question all, Mike? I hadn't really heard it yet. What was it? All right, uh, trivia question. We're looking for which NHL club drafted Maxim Sushko in what year and what round? Oh. Pretty hard question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'll uh, tell you what. Try to find the answer. You can also uh, give us a call back. So okay. have a chance. Okay? Thanks very much. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck, guys. Same Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, so um, Mike, a uh, frequent caller for us. Uh, thanks for calling in, Mike. Um, but he, he brings up a good point. You seem like you were very passionate when you played with uh, over with Team Belarus at uh, the World Juniors. It's been a really good experience because we played top of the best countries in the world, and I was enjoyed play against the best teams, and it's really good experience for us for everybody in my team we lost but coach trusted me so much like my line in 1d we played at least 25 27 minutes in the wow. game and i was enjoying play that much because i felt even better when i played 27 minutes and i played 15 17 yeah, absolutely. No, and you can see the, the influential factor you definitely had on them. Uh, you had a, a good World Juniors yourself, stat-wise, along with that. So um, we're glad that you enjoyed that. Um, you guys fit, you went through a little bit of adversity earlier on, and it seems like you guys are, are coming out of that now. Cole, we'll start with you in the sense of it seems like the mindset in this team compared to the beginning of the year is is almost night and day now. It's almost completely different. Yeah, um, I think confidence is a big word there. Um, we've got a lot of it right now, um, and that comes with uh, closing third periods out. Um, I know I mentioned it a bit earlier, but it was something that we did seem to uh, struggle with for whatever reason early on. and. Um, like you said, went through some goaltending adversity. Um, you know, and Goose, our 16-year-old, had to play um, a lot more minutes than I'm sure he originally expected to at the beginning of the year. Um, but you know what? 
we uh, we're we're um, you know we're a better team because of it now, and uh, and we're closing those third periods out. And when we, when we do that, that you know does give us a lot of confidence, and it uh, and it gives us um, you know that a bit of mo mojo here. And um, like you said, seven out of eight is uh, is huge for us, especially at a time like this when the West is is as tight as it is. So um, yeah, we're just gonna continue to, uh, to play with confidence and hopefully keep that going here with uh, with the Eastern Road Trip. All right, so we have uh, Michelle on the line with us. Michelle, how are you tonight? Good, yourself? Good, thank you. Uh, do you have the answer to our trivia question? I am being set the answer. Okay. It was 2017, the Philadelphia Flyers in the fourth round. Nice. Absolutely, right on the head. Congratulations, you win a pair of tickets to February 14th, Valentine's Day game against the London Knights. Should be a good one. Uh, do you have any questions for these guys before you go? All right. Thank well, you, thanks thank a lot, you. Michelle. And uh, stay on the line so we can get your information for those tickets. Okay. So, uh, yes, the Philadelphia Flyers. How excited was that? Were, were you for that? I've been in Chicago on draft, yeah, and my agent told me before draft that I'm going to be third, fourth round. So I was waiting, but, you know, when you wait in there and you still don't know what uh, what team, you're pretty nervous. And I was texting with Philly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we was talking about every player like who got drafted. Yeah, and Philadelphia has two picks, like 106, 107. And first they got drafted Matt Strong from Hamilton, and right after they got drafted me, so I wasn't ready, and my agent just said, okay, you got drafted, let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and I met uh, general manager, coach, and whole staff uh, around the table, and I was so excited, and now I already forgot almost holes it part because pr probably because I was so excited now was that your first time ever in Chicago yeah 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 do they is, is it perfect when they call it the windy city was yeah. it really windy there yeah I came a couple of days before and we was walking with my agent and temperature like was 25 26 and I was walking on my t-shirt at sometimes when it's really windy <laughs> I was I was getting cold <laughs> <laughs> so Cole uh, we know from what you've told us that you guys are, are pretty good friends yeah. um, when Maxim was drafted um, did he say anything uh, to you and and what was what were your feelings on it uh, I got a snapchat from him yeah of him in the car and he had his he had his sunglasses on and um, his hat on and his jersey and it was just like I had obviously been following the draft, so I, I saw him selected and um, was really excited about that. It was it was a great draft for Owen Sound and all yep. those guys that got picked up. And um, but yeah, you know, any time that you get one of like you see someone that you know get drafted, let alone someone that you know you drove to the rink every day the year before, and you yeah. you, uh, you know like you is one of your your best buddies that, uh, that it's a pretty special feeling and it hits close to home so um, and you know that's everyone's dream growing up is to play in the NHL get drafted to the NHL so um, I was really excited um, you know for him and the other guys that got drafted and it was just you know I w wish I could have always been there uh, to like be a part of it but uh, you know thanks to some of those apps that you can you can always feel like you're there with some of the videos and, and, and pictures so and cool. hopefully one day when it, when your time comes, um, Maxim, you can return the favor there. You can Snapchat him a, a, a video with some sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll just keep Hope working. So. <laughs> we'll keep working. See what um, happens. Yeah, so I want to throw out the second trivia question. It's going to be for a pair of tickets for the Auto 67s game on February the 17th. How many games has Cole Cameron played in his OHL career? So that's plain and simple. That's what we're looking for. And Cole Cameron, when we first told him this, he said, I've played that many games <laughs> in the OHL. Um, it seems like it, it hasn't been that long, Cole, yeah. but uh, you certainly are soaking up every moment of it here at home. So. Yeah, no, it's a great city. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we've got a great group of guys. Um, I'm not going to give away the answer, but um, it's certainly exciting to uh, 
to like look back and, and go like it doesn't it's like holy crap like I've played that many games so far yeah um, and you know like with that you, you get a little more confidence and um, you know you realize that the the seasons really are you know 68 games long like that's it's a lot of games and adds up and um, you know I talked about the team's confidence earlier but you know when you when you get to play that much and you know take a bit of a bigger role this year um, as far as ice time is concerned and um, in different situations and you know penalty penalty kill and stuff like that that uh, you, know, you get more confident in your game and, and you feel more comfortable out there and you're you know a year older and stronger and um, you know more more mature so um, but you know it, it's a fun league it's a fun team um, I really do enjoy the city um, you know, I'm not from a big city back home so um, I don't feel out of place at all in, in that sense and and because of that it makes our team a lot closer and um, you know when we do get close and, and you know because we are so close and um, we see each other every day that you know I think we're starting to see that on the ice and, and it and it transfers and relates there so all right uh, we have Dave on the line with us Dave how are you tonight Pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, do you have the answer to our trivia question? 108 games. I uh, exactly. got the first part right, but uh, you're something. a little off. So uh, we want you to try again. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so before we, yes. Yeah, so we we also do want it, want to uh, let you know it is regular season games that we're looking at. So just a total of his whole regular season games, and I'll give you a little bit of a hint, okay? If you go on the attack website, total games, you should be able to see it there. So uh, that's what we're looking for, triple digits. We have Polly on the phone. Polly, I think. Polly, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good, thank it's you. Oh, it's Holly, hi. Holly. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was Polly, but <laughs> no. it's Holly. Uh, do you have any uh, questions for these guys, Holly? Yes, for shoes and coal camp. Okay. Um, now, I was just wondering, um, what is you guys' favorite baseball uh, team? Baseball? Um, I'm going to go with the Toronto Blue Jays. I don't know why. Yeah. That's what everybody likes the Blue Jays, and I can tell them why. San Francisco drives for better. So, so you, you're a Blue Jays fan, is that what you said? Sorry. No, I'm not a Blue Jays fan, but I'm the Giants uh, fan. Okay. What about you, Maxim? Do you like baseball? Not really, but we have team from my hometown, and I have a couple of friends from the team, so I cheer for the team. All right, so uh, you cheer for the, the Belarus baseball team. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So there you have it, Holly. Maxim cheers for the Belarus baseball team there. All right. Cole, I just want to tell you that your nickname is Cole Cam. Cole Cam. All right, thanks, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Holly. Um, Holly, uh, uh, another frequent, frequent listener call, of ours. Yeah. Great to have people calling in and, and being able to ask you guys questions. Um, so, friendship between you two. Cole told us a little bit of it. Uh, you tell us how, how you and Cole became friends, and I know he's been a, a very important person for you on this hockey club. Yeah, uh, on at the start of last season we had goalie <laughs> he, he was leaving <laughs> he was my neighbor yeah. and after we trade him and the next day no one couldn't drive me and Cole said okay I can drive him and that's how it start and after like every day we try to find something new and try and know something new about each other and we start spend a lot of time together we start hang out together s go to the shop buy some clothes <laughs> because I like yeah and that's how it start and now it's like he's pretty close friend for me and he helped me so much in my first season because you know when you just alone when you can speak like you can, when you can speak English really good you worry about it so you worry about that boys can understand you that that somebody can understand you and Cole helped me a lot and Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so, um, no, when you mentioned to us uh, 
the fact of uh, you and Maximus Sushko and you guys maybe it helped each other speak um, a, a little bit of, of each other's language. Um, has, uh, how's Cole with his, uh, his Belarusian or his, his Russian? I try and learn him last year. Like I give him a couple words every, da every day. Yeah. But after summer, I asked him and he said, oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> You're going to have to quiz him soon. Yeah. Oh, boy. You're going to have to brush up then. <laughs> All right. So we have Sue on the line with us. Sue, how are you tonight? Fine, thanks. All right, Sue, uh, do you have the answer to our trivia question? Uh, 125? Uh, nope. Um, we're still in that 100 category. Uh, knock a shave a little bit off that, and, you, and you'll you'll have your answer. Probably about 20 of those. So, um, do you have any questions while you're on the phone with us? No. All right. Really? Well, uh, we we <laughs> encourage you to uh, call back again. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a tricky one here, eh, guys? Um, okay. So we'll give you a hint. It's after 99, but a couple before 104. So you, we have Mike on the line with us. Mike, uh, you have the answer to that trivia question of ours. Well, I'm pretty sure I do, it's 108. 108. Um, we're getting a lot of- <laughs> Starting to wonder who has the right eights. answers here. <laughs> um, we have a little bit of a different one here. We're gonna have to quickly search on, uh, um, search that one up for us. Um, hold on uh, just a moment there, Mike. Um, That's Every game he's playing, he's getting better too. I really enjoy watching Cole play too. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. I yeah, really I do. I think all the, you know, you hate to have injuries, but he stepped up like twofold and played really well. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, um, thank you. It's definitely stepping up into uh, the offensive rush there too, which is. Yeah, uh, and defensively too, pretty solid young player. All right. Uh, um, yeah. Let's let's grab the answer to this uh, this trivia question for ourselves. Um, the moment of truth. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm is, gonna is, is Mike still on the line? Mike is still with us, I believe. Right. It is a hundred. We apologize, Mike. We are oh. sorry. Um, we thought it was uh, 101. We are actually off, so we apologize. <laughs> um, we have uh, 108 is the correct answer there. So we do apologize to anybody else that, that got 108 um, as the right answer there. But um, yeah, we were seven games a little short. So you have <laughs> played more than just 101 games. Cut me short there. You've uh, <laughs> Played 108, so uh, congratulations there, Mike. Um, and we're gonna figure out our end of that. But um, so, outside of hockey, what do you guys like to do? Um, like together? I, well, <laughs> together with the team. Um, when you're away from the the arena, what's a, a big thing that you guys enjoy to do, Maxim? <sighs> Now I spend a lot of time when I'm talking with my girlfriend because we okay. have five hours difference on time. Yeah. Yeah, and every time when I'm coming back from for, from the rink, we talk a lot and she's going to bed. And after, usually we have supper and sometimes we hang out with boys and uh, I like to read books. Read books. Yeah. yeah, and especially when I'm bored or on the road trips, I I bought for the electronic book. Yeah, and I'm reading a lot right now, and I think it's I spend all my time when I'm reading book. <laughs> All right. So if you had to choose a book that you like to read, wow, it's hard. It's <laughs> hard because. <laughs> I read in Russian, so I, I don't know how it's translated. Okay, all right. Uh, do you, you you haven't got to that point where you're reading any English books yet, or just Russian books? It's Rosetta Stone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tried in summer, but it's pretty hard for me because I I spend a lot of time because I'm reading. I 
it's running on my phone words which I don't know and after I translate so it takes so long and All right. it's so much easier to read just Russian books. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we have um, an interview that we want to show you with uh, Mark McKelvey and assistant coach Alan Latang. All right, Mark McKelvey standing on the east side following an Owen Sound attack. 6-3 victory over the Kitchener Rangers, joined by attack assistant coach Alan Latang. And Alan, a really good week for your hockey club, and you guys seem to have really turn the corner. But tonight was a, a tough task facing the top team in your division. And you guys know the Rangers so well, and I'm sure you could figure out what they were going to bring tonight. But uh, what did you see from your team tonight that allowed you guys to come away with a, a convincing 6-3 win? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, the rivalry has been great. I think it goes back to last year in the playoffs, right? When uh, with, with some of the moves they made, I think I think our guys really get jacked up to play them. You know, uh, they're, they're a team that's obviously ahead of us, and we're, we're, we're hunting them down a little bit. But uh, the biggest thing for tonight was our guys relished our matchups we wanted to get, right? We wanted certain lines against certain players. Our, you know, our, our D core as, as a group of six played really, really well in the back-to-back, -back and we just kept things pretty simple. We didn't turn too many pucks over, and I think I think we put them on their heels a little bit early. Seems like they try to sort of be bullies out there a little bit. Do you feel that your guys, when uh, they start to get like that, uh, kind of rise to the occasion? Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, they're, they're a big team for sure. They've got some guys that are, you know, they can really protect the puck down low and, and, and grind us down low. But we, we did a great job of popping pucks with our sticks, with our, our little guys getting in there and, and, and getting out. And I, I think it was just the puck movement that really helped us. We moved the puck very quickly tonight and, and had close support and uh, things worked out really well. And it, like I said, it put them on their heels and, and some of those big guys don't like to turn and go back and get pucks all the time or come out of all the offensive zone all the time. Do you find now that your team is dealing with adversity a little better? You look back to last night where you guys blew the lead, but you still came out with a victory in regulation. And uh, this evening, uh, the Rangers were quick to respond a couple of times after you guys scored. And even when Jonah went down, you guys scored on the next shift. Uh, is this group, just with everything they face this year, uh, starting to show their experience? Yeah, I think adversity is a funny thing, how you, how you deal with it. And... Um, Again, yeah, we talked about shifts after goals, and you know they, they kind of got the best of us a little bit there. But you know we, we held in there and, and and kept doing the right things. But um, it's amazing what a couple wins in a row put, uh, does for you. It's amazing when you get great goaltending and you and you get the big save when you need it. And, and guys are just starting to believe, and, and and you get Hancock back, and Gadge comes back in the lineup, and, and you got Jacob and, and Trent Bork and Marcus Phillips and all the D. Everybody really playing their best hockey right now, which is which is what we need. Looking at the D, only having 5D for three games, uh, I'm sure they're tired after this week, but uh, at the same time, you have to be uh, really impressed with how they handled it. They all handled it great. You know, even even uh, Igor coming in, right? He's, he's playing he's playing uh, minutes that he, he's not used to yet, but he's done a great job moving the puck. He's kept himself in great shape and kept himself prepared and ready, and, you know, uh, all of them played well tonight. Are you starting to find that the base shore is getting a little louder, uh, similar to what we've seen uh, in the past? Uh, that's now seven wins in a row on home ice. Yeah, that, that's the atmosphere I was used to last year, and, you know, it's really great to see it here again now. And lastly, coming up next weekend at your Eastern uh, Road Swing, uh, at this point in the year, the guys all know each other pretty well, but still a good opportunity for this group to come together? Yeah, it's always a great opportunity to go on the road. You know, it takes a little pressure off of the, the stuff at home. We, get, we, we eat pretty well on the road, so <laughs> it's always good. It'll be a big trip for us, though. You know, uh, you know Ole's going back into his old, uh, his old hometown. Todd's going back into Kingston. So, you know, we've got something to, something to play for and, and points to get for sure. Well, congratulations on the victory tonight, and best of luck next weekend. Thank you very much. All right, the Ole Sound attack will be in action next on Thursday evening against the Peterborough Peets. All right, so... Um Eastern road trip. Uh, Cole, uh, if you just want to quickly tell us kind of what you guys are, are aiming for uh, in this in this road trip. Uh, six points. I think that's pretty simple. Plain and um, simple, absolutely, yeah. Um, hopefully continue the, the win streak as, as we keep going here. Um, do you like Tim Hortons? Yes. Okay, what's your, your, your go-to drink? Cole can say <laughs> double-double. Medium double-double. Medium double-double? <laughs> yeah. You as well? Uh, what, what do I drink? Potato wedges every time. <laughs> <laughs> Potato wedges? Yeah. Does he have the chili on top too? No, it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Cole's on a little bit of a budget, I guess, eh? Uh, doesn't, usually, doesn't usually sit too well when you have no. the chili on top. So. All right. Um, quickly, your favorite movie, even if it's Russian. It's hard. So many, eh? Yeah, so many. Uh, 
I watched the last one. It's a Russian movie about Olympic Games 1980 when uh, Team SR won Team USA in basketball oh. in, in the last second. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Cole, correctly yours. Uh, first movie that came to mind was Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump, <laughs> perfect. Know. So that's great. Guys, thanks for joining me, and uh, best of luck this week. I uh, hope you guys come away with six points. Thank you.